number one thing to talk about. The one and only Eric Griffin is bitching and moaning and bitching and moaning like he always does. Like he always does. Always bitching and moaning about something. Eric Griffin, always finding a way to bitch and moan. Now, it could be, having thought about it some more, it could be he's just got one of those faces. He's just got one of those dour, sad, pathetic, moody, negative faces. It could be also that he might smoke a bunch. Our squad, our nation, our squad, our nation, our squad, our nation, our squad, our nation, our squad, our nation. Allow me, allow me, allow me, allow me, allow me. It's not our squad, our nation. You guys are dumb. You guys are dumb. So, it could be he's moody. He could big up, big up. Wingers, but dingers, appreciate it, brother. You're a legend. It could be that he's moody. It could be that he's angry. It could be that he's sad. Or, I thought about it recently. I wonder if he just smokes a lot. Maybe he just smokes a lot. Maybe he just smokes a lot. Maybe. Maybe he just smokes a lot. I'm not too sure. That could be the case. Because I feel myself like, why is it every time I check into his... But also, I'm not sure about you guys. Let me know in the stream chat. For some of my more experienced smokers out there, do strains exist that make you moody? Like, if you're a moody person, when you smoke weed, does it make you more moody or does it chill you out? I thought weed's meant to, like, chill you out and make you, like, in a bit of a happy relaxed mood is that possible or if you're like a moody fucker anyway and you smoke it just makes you more into a it makes you into like a chiller no it makes you more into like a chill version of your actual self but you're still yourself i don't know either way eric griffin was in his moody classic mode on his podcast and he went on some crazy rant he went on some crazy rant that i love because it was very much um brought back by himself because he says stuff like oh i'm gonna check the comments and read the comments i guess he reads the comments live on stream and goes through some questions and answers them but i'm assuming there are some people that watch eric griffin's streams who are trolls who also know how to get under his skin so every time he streams they'll just ask a question that they know he's gonna bite at and get all aggy about and i think the first question he bites at and gets all aggy about is the question regarding his wife working at Target being a visual merchandiser. That whole troll that was started by Red Bar, he's still, he's still, he's still angry about it. He's still pissed off about it. He says that he's not pissed off about it, but he clearly is. It clearly bothers him. And he just bites. It's like, bro, you can you can easily ignore the question. You don't have to answer the question, but I guess he's trying to act like he's not bothered by answering the question, and then he gets himself in a tizzy. Anyway, let's watch this clip, and you'll see how moody this podcast was. Absolute mood trip. Towards the end, it sort of improves when he starts talking about his direction work. He did a new special with Matt Reif recently um, that was, you know, um, well-received and shit, and clearly he's quite good at that side of his job. And when he was talking about reality TV show stuff, he started to perk up a bit. But in the beginning, when he's like focusing on himself and looking for his comments he's so negative he's so dour he's so miserable um and his podcast is a slog to get through it's like 40 minutes sometimes 50 minutes but it feels like a two-hour pod because just how like sad and negative and dour he just sat there in his chair like a sack of potatoes like oh god such a miserable cunt let's watch the video anyway we got to go to comments so and if you have some comments mm. in in the live chat mm, that's not mm. trolly ass comments mm. uh feel free to you know mm. i'll look i'll look at them right now yeah, you know? Right now. this is how we do here mm. on riff on with uh, come on man up the energy a little bit brother why are you so negative and dour he's like a fucking comedy version of a Re Re review tech to usa like are you are you dickers are you fucking dickers come on man like pep up a little bit like come on Get the energy going a little bit. It's like, God damn it, Eric Griffin. A, a Griffon, you know? Yeah, because I, I, like, I like a good conversation, right? You know, I like to like, but you know, it's just, man, I, I just don't understand. I, like I, a, I, I was talking about this. I one. like a good conversation. Can you say anything more generic and vague? I like a good conversation. But then, no, you don't like a good conversation. You like people saying things that you agree with or saying things that make you feel good. But then the moment people say things that don't make you feel good or you don't agree with, you then get into a mood and it negatively affects a pod and you just end up being a fucking shitty person to be around and to listen to. Could you imagine living with this guy day to day?
I'm hoping he's like one of those people who, as soon as he goes to work, he's like dour and sad. But when he's at home, he's like a nif- different person because he's around his wife, he's around his kid, and life is just amazing. I'm hoping he's one of those type of people. Or he could be the type of person who is like this on stream and is like this at home. If that's the case, I pray for his wife and kids, boy, because this guy is so miserable. On the golden hour. Um... And by the way, he has no reason to be. He has no reason to be, in my opinion. He's not that well-known of a comic, but clearly he's good at stand-up. Everyone always says, whenever I'm riff- whenever I'm fucking ragging on him on the stream and saying how much I fucking dislike him as a person, everyone on the stream is always talking about, oh my God, no, I actually saw him do stand-up. He's fucking amazing. Clearly he's good at directing and producing specials. He's done two of Matt Rife's specials so far. Clearly he's good at all that sort of shit. He's living a good life in that regard. He's got a following on Twitch. He's got probably a decent Patreon going on. He does fucking gold now. Probably gets a good appearance for that thing. So life is kind of good for you. You recently married, got a kid. Life is actually decent. But this guy's acting like, I don't know, as if he's like telling jokes on the street corner or something. So miserable, so dour. Like, come on. I think that like, because like Twitter... I'm off Twitter. Like I don't use it as much. Okay. I always talk about that. Okay. Good but to know. There, there is something that I did like that they do now on Twitter. They had this thing called ID verification. And I- of course, you like ID verification on Twitter. Of course, he some he somehow thinks if all his trolls have to register their ID on YouTube, that's going to mitigate or completely remove any trolly comments. And it's like I don't think it works like that, my friend. I don't think that's the reason why people troll you. People don't troll you because they're anonymous. People troll you because they know it gets under your skin and because they know you're easily triggered. That's it. It's not because they're trolling you because they can easily hide behind anonymity. No, they're trolling you because they know they can get a reaction out of you. That's why. Stop reacting, stop biting, and you'll be fine. I think anybody can do it, you know? You put your ID, they scan the front, you scan the front and back. They had they get the information and then you take an actual picture. By the way, comedians, these free speech advocates are fucking championing censorship like this. These free speech abs advocates, these anti cancer culture people are hoping that social media platforms far and wide um, you know, implement a system where you have to scan your fucking ID in or, or your passport in order to have an account that you can leave a comment on. Ha! <laughs> Who would have thought of yourself and then that picture they they verify that this is the person that um this is the person you know what i mean so <laughs> i was like man this is how it should be i mean i think everybody should have to do that you know yeah i bet I you do i have bet to, you like, do, do I that. Bet then you, you do. can like i bet you something do. if something real nefarious happens from somebody's account or somebody says some off-putting stuff at least they it's there. They can know. They can know. They can send a letter to that person. Hey, uh, you've been suspended or whatever. We don't- send a letter. You want them to send a government letter, a government what a fucking uh, a letter headed letter to them to, saying what you want them to send the feds to their home, SWAT, CIA, FBI, because they said you're a dour negative motherfucker. We don't. This is like hate speech or whatever it is like hate that. Speech. You know what I mean? It's just too many <laughs> cowards on the freaking internet. Oh. Oh, tough guy Eric Griffin too many cowards honestly the things that I've seen people say on his flipping streams is mild compared to other comedians it's not even that bad and surely surely if you're Eric Griffin that's what I want to because he seems like an intelligent guy he seems like a well he seems like an intelligent guy I'd love to ask him like what did you expect getting into bed with Brendan and Chris D'Elia? honestly he already had a bit of a tenuous sketchy up in the air reputation around people that watch comedy podcasts because i remember i was exposed to eric griffin mostly through tiger belly and bobby lee and those guys and from there you could see the fans were a bit hot and cold about him in general across the board this is before he even was associated with brendan or crystalia people weren't really too sure about him even though he was bobby lee's friend then the whole you know um bad friends podcast happens Bobby Lee doesn't do a podcast with Eric Griffin. That fallout happens. And we saw, you see it kind of play out where he kind of like, you know, he's not really friends with them anymore. He's hanging out more with Bobby Lee's brother. Then he's hanging out with other people. Then he kind of is in no man's land. And then he kind of ends up with Theo and he kind of ends up with Brendan sort of like by default, even though he took the piss out of Brendan early on and didn't really like him. Blah, blah, blah. Long story short, you know what happened. You know the law. The mad thing is for me, 
I don't actually mind if he decides to go work for Chris D'Elia or work with Chris D'Elia and Brendan because he doesn't think whatever people say about them is true. He doesn't believe the allegations about Chris D'Elia. He doesn't think it's like, you know, morally um, questionable to work with somebody with those sort of allegations next to the name. He wants to give him a chance and shit. He doesn't think much of it. It's just work to him. He doesn't care about the Brendan thing. He knows Brendan personally. He's a different guy in private, blah, blah, blah. Whatever his reason is, what his reason is. But you have to know on the outside looking in for other people, it's going to look away when you decide to get into business with Chris and Brendan. It is. People are going to unfairly judge you based on your association. That's why someone like Theo ran away from those guys as soon as possible. Because I'm sure if Theo would still be doing King of the Sting with Brendan and having Chris pop in sometimes, it, he might not have the goodwill and the good fucking, you know, vibes around him that he does now. Because he's completely separated himself from those people, I think that's why everyone's like more in love with him than they've ever been. So with with Eric, I think he's not realizing that a lot of the hate, I think, I'd say like 70% of the hate, just throwing out a figure there. I think 70% of the hate comes from the fact that he works with Chris and he works with Brendan. And people immediately just clumped them together. Even though he's not as bad as those guys, clearly, in terms of a annoying low cow type of figure. And even Chris, outside of the allegations, He's a decent watch. He's watching a podcast. He's kind of funny on the pod. Way funny than he's on stage. But those allegations are fucking crazy, right? So it's hard to fucking ignore those type of thing because he might be an, a legit flipping PDF. But for some reason, Eric doesn't realize that working with a PDF and working with one of the most hated people in comedy and on YouTube might have negative consequences for you. And you might then get some of those leftover trolls coming in your comments trying to fucking press your buttons and get under your skin. That's it. It's not that hard to fucking get your head around. But he can't figure it out. He wants to fucking get the CIA involved, have people sign their fucking passports and put their IDs in. People are cowards. It's like, no, I don't think you're understanding what's happening, bro. Yes, you've got some money now. Yes, you've probably been able to secure your family's future. And he's probably got kids. He has to think about things differently. I understand. But the price you pay for securing your family's future by working with those people is that you have... Uh, a level of trolling and annoyance that you probably would would have never got if you never worked with them. That's the price you have to pay. It is what it is. But anyway, let's go to... Um... Oh, yeah, true. Big up Andrew Tent. Yeah, true. There were some allegations about Eric. There were some allegations about Eric too. Um, I forgot who said it. I'm not too sure if that was that... Um, who's the... Who's the light-skinned girl with the with the big afro? Alice Alice Hamilton, right? Alice, Alice Hamilton? Hamilton or Hamilton? Something. I think her name is Alice anyway. She said something about Eric or she posted something that some girl sent about Eric, about how he was like, you know, a little bit handsy, a little bit forward. And I think he tried to kind of, I think he tried to get in front of it by saying something himself. I think he tried to get in front of it and it was a bit of a weird explanation. But I think she said something about it. I think so. I think so. Let's go to uh, comment right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, first comment, uh, <laughs> troll comment. Well, I'm gonna. I'm, we'll just read it. I don't care. Is oh, his why? Why though? Why when it bothers you? Why? Why when it bothers you? Why when it annoys you? Why when you're trying to put on a fun show for your fans? Do you spend like ten minutes talking to trolls? This is classic low cow behavior. It's like, bro, this person or somebody else will see this, and then guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna be there again next week, and the week after, and the week after, and the week after. God almighty. It's a troll comment. It's, it's going to hurt my feelings. I'm going to go on a rant. I should ignore it, but let's go. Let's go. It's like, okay, I guess. His wife's still working at Target, uh, making $14 an hour just for fun in quotes. You know, he was trying to be like. A <laughs> Honestly, this one random troll that doesn't actually matter has still, has still, had, still has some claws in it. Like, how is that possible? How does a troll, where they're trying to take the piss out of your wife working a normal job, why would that even hurt your feelings? You're a stand-up comedian. Why shouldn't your wife work a normal job? Have you seen what Brendan Schub's wife's doing? Brendan Schub's wife's sitting on YouTube telling a 12-minute story about some minor inconvenience she had at fucking a Starbucks drive through that nearly led to fucking Brendan Schub's death. 12-minute story of something that, that could have easily been dealt with with a little, like, apology and move on and drive away. That woman is bored, bro. That's what happens when you're bored. When you're a bored housewife, that's what happens. 
You turn minor fucking dalliances, minor in interactions into some big thing that you nearly cost the lives of your fucking husband. It's probably a good thing that your wife is going to work every day. It gives her something to do. It gives her something to do. You both are out of the house. She's not on top of you. You're not on top of her. It's probably a good thing. Why would you be bothered? Why would it get under your skin? Like, it's so bizarre. It's such a minor troll. And it's, oh, I don't really care. It's like, then why are you reading it? Why are you rattled? Why? God almighty. Cool guy, you know what I mean? Uh, actually, no. <laughs> uh, it wasn't for that much at, at all because she was actually the visual merchandiser of the store. <laughs> we don't know. We don't care. Position. Uh, so it wasn't, you know, I, it wasn't for $14 an hour. <laughs> okay, great. Oh, he <laughs> and got us, she got, he got great us. insurance from it. Wasn't it wasn't for uh, it which, was you know, the, 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 <laughs> which was, we gave birth with it. <laughs> so that insurance oh, was great wow. between her insurance and my insurance. We didn't have to pay anything. So shout out to Target. Thanks for, uh, thanks for that. And like, <laughs> shout out to Target. Yo, this Eric Griffin, man. Honestly, Eric Griffin, man. Honestly, Eric Griffin. Fucking hell. What a fucking loser. Like, honestly, it really isn't that big of a deal, man. Just ignore it and keep it moving, brother. Oh. Like I said, you know, it's just a, a position you get some experience being a visual merchandiser. Then you can, like, take that experience and go to other stores. You know, he's setting up the displays and making the store look beautiful or whatever, you know. That's what she was doing. So, but no, actually, she hasn't been in over a year. <laughs> but I know the trolls like talking about that. So now you're, so now he's mentioned, so now he just threw out some information that most of us don't need to even know. Why would you be know what your wife does for a job? She's not a fucking public figure. Just, you know what I mean? Like, why are you throwing that bit of information? Oh, she's actually not at Target anymore. So now she's got another job. Now you're giving the trolls more ammunition to go digging in to find where our other job is now. God, honestly, I, I, don't, I don't understand these people. Yeah, they think it's funny. Yeah, or or that it bugs me. Oh, yeah, clearly it doesn't <laughs> it bug doesn't. you. <laughs> clearly. But thanks for... Uh... <laughs> it doesn't bug me. Yeah, I bet it doesn't. <laughs> um, Thanks for that. Thanks for coming out, you know. Um, Yeah, thanks for, you know... You know what I mean? I'm gonna put a little heart. Gonna, let me put a little heart on his thing. Oh yeah, that that, that shows you no bother, doesn't it? Let's see. So dark. Honestly, 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 I don't know what's wrong with this person. I really don't know. Maybe there's a part of him that kind of enjoys, in a weird way, the trolling. Maybe, maybe he just likes the attention. Maybe he has like an embarrassment. What's that thing called? Like an embarrassment kink or something. But it's so weird, man. It's so bizarre for somebody already who's because. Let's say, for instance, everything I'm saying about Eric is not true. Let's just say he just has like a... Because some people have it, right? It's like a um, negative dep deposition, right? M maybe he's just like a dour person, but he's not actually sad or anything. He just comes across a bit dour. You know how some people are just like, they don't have much to say, or they're people of few words. Maybe he's one of those people. Maybe he's just like, you know, whatever kind of person. If that's the case, surely you have to be a little bit sensitive about not going out of your way to engage with things that are going to make you feel worse than how you already feel on a daily basis. Surely you'd be a little bit more sensitive to be like, okay, cool. I'm going to avoid certain things because I already am at a base level of like minus five. I don't want to get lower than that, but no, he somehow just keeps waddling into it. And then like, bro, you clearly not, you're clearly not cut out for this. You know what I mean? Just leave the comments alone. Even a comment from a female Uber driver bugs. Exactly, exactly. Too much estrogen. Nothing bugs him, but he complains about everything. <laughs> Honestly, the whole, I think half of the pod, until he gets to the point to the end, where he starts talking about reality TV shows, which he loves and shit, and movies he's watching and stuff, the majority of the pod is the hardest to get from the beginning because the intro is so low energy. Even that whole singing thing, he doesn't do anymore. That would have been hoo hoo woo 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 hoo all that shit, he doesn't even do that shit anymore. It's so low energy, it's so dour, it's so negative, it's so miserable, the first 20 minutes. But towards the end, it gets better because he starts talking about things he's actually passionate about. So I'm curious, why not just start the podcast that way? Why not just start the podcast talking about Love is Blind, Big Brother, 
um, whatever else he watches. Just start the podcast talking about that instead of starting it like, okay, we're back. Huh. Another story about buying a house. Huh. The baby going out. It's date night, family night. Huh. Like, fucking hell, go read the comments. Okay, it's a troll one, but I'll read it anyway. Huh. Like, God almighty, bro. So negative, so miserable. Just, ugh. Ugh, it drives me fucking crazy, honestly. Really fucking does. He's so annoying to watch. So fucking miserable. Just like, come on, bro. Enough, enough. We get it. We get it. We fucking get it. But again, what do I know? Nothing. <laughs>